Hello and welcome dear viewers to the another informative video on dissolution method development and contents of the dissolution development report. So in this topic mainly we are going to understand how the dissolution method is developed, what are the parameters to be understood for dissolution method development and what are the contents of the dissolution method development report. See this report is to be generated based on the dissolution development studies and this report is a part of the quality module of the generic formulation and that is submitted to the regulatory agencies. Generally the oral formulations are of immediate release, modified release and delayed release type of design and based on this design the dissolution method is developed and the dissolution specifications are made. Drugs mainly are of four BCS types that is BCS 1, 2, 3 and 4 and out of these the BCS class 1 and 3 drugs are highly soluble and the BCS class 2 and 4 are low soluble drugs. So, the dissolution takes into consideration the solubility of the drug as well and the formulation design also. Generally, the dissolution method is taken from the USP monograph or FDA dissolution database is there that is called as uh, OGD database and sometimes the biopharmaceutics review of the approved product is taken from the USFDA site and that is referred as a starting point for the dissolution method development. So generally the dissolution method sources are USP and the other pharmacopoeia monographs, then FDA dissolution methods database and the biopharmaceutics review of the drug product if it is approved in the US market then that biopharmaceutics review can be taken and in that review generally the innovator or reference product manufacturer gives the information regarding the dissolution method. So that method can be referred as a starting point for the dissolution method development. And if the USP monograph is there or FDA dissolution method database is there, then generally these references are taken for the dissolution method development. Then what if there is a no method? There is no dissolution method available in the monograph or there is no monograph or there is a, a, no availability of the dissolution method in the OGD. So at that time the applicants required to develop an appropriate and discriminatory dissolution method for the proposed drug product taking into consideration the method development and validation principles described in the USP General Chapter 711 for dissolution, USP General Chapter 724 for drug release, USP General Chapter 1092 and the dissolution procedure development and validation. So all these USP chapters are required to be referred and on the basis of these principles given in this USP chapters the dissolution method is required to be developed and that will be a discriminatory method and it will be a product specific method. Then the dissolution should be product specific and therefore the selection of the dissolution method and the setting of the acceptance criteria should be based on the dissolution data generated for the proposed drug product. So the simple meaning of this is the dissolution method should be discriminatory, it should be product specific and the acceptance criteria should be designed based on the dissolution data generated for the drug product which is proposed to be applied for the regulatory evaluation. Then the in vitro dissolution method to be used for quality control of the proposed drug product it is recommended that irrespective of the source of the proposed dissolution method that is USP, FDA or in-house the additional dissolution studies to be conducted 
to demonstrate the suitability of the selected method for the proposed drug product. That means if you have taken the reference from USP FDA website or you have developed an in-house method, still the suitability of the dissolution method is required to be demonstrated. And nowadays, if the USP dissolution method is directly taken with the Q point and all, and still the applicants can get the regulatory queries for the dissolution. Why? Because every application uh, should contain the report which demonstrates the suitability of the selected dissolution method for the proposed drug product. Then the report of the development and validation of the in-house method or verification of USP method being proposed for dissolution QC testing be provided in the drug products or ANDA submission specifically in module 3 to P5.4. So this is the module where the dissolution method development report is given and whether the applicant takes the USP method or the applicant develop the new method the correct information should be provided and this report is given into the module 3 to P5.4. The report should include the complete information or data on the solubility of the drug substances, adequacy of the selected dissolution testing conditions that is apparatus, rotation speed, medium, volume, sampling times ETC and validation verification of the robustness of the selected dissolution method. The solubility will involve the equilibrium solubility and also many times the applicant gives BCS solubility data. Then the adequacy of the selected dissolution testing condition will involve the selection of apparatus. Whatever the, whatever the dissolution apparatus is selected that might be USP1, USP2, USP3 or USP4 that is to be correctly mentioned and its justification is required to be given. Also the data with comparison of the equipment or apparatus, apparatus 1 and 2 it give, is given in the parallel and out of that the justification is given that why this apparatus is selected. Then similarly the rotation speed is determined, medium is determined, media volume whether it is 500 ml, 600 ml, 900 ml or 1000 ml and the sampling times are given. Then validation or verification of the robustness of the selected dissolution method is required to be given into the report. Then the validation or verification of the analytical method used to assay the dissolution sample is given. Now coming to the discriminatory ability or discriminatory power of the dissolution method. Demonstration of the discriminating ability of the dissolution method for modified release products and immediate release products containing low soluble drug substances is very must and it is very much required. Now, if the drug product contains the BCS 1 or 3 which are highly soluble and if the release of the, the BCS class 1 and 3 are not modified, then the general criteria can be given like 80% release or 80% Q in 15 minutes or 30 minutes based on the ICH M9 guideline and also as per the dissolution guidance provided by US FDA in 2018. So these two we are going to cover in detail in the upcoming slides. So discriminatory ability we will see now generally for modified release formulations like extended release, prolonged release, suspended release, delayed release and the IR formulations, immediate release formulations containing low soluble drug substances. The discriminatory uh, ability of the dissolution method is required to be proven. So the content of the this uh, section should include the drug solubility over pH of uh, physiological pH range, selection of the apparatus, 
वन टू थ्री और फोर सिलेक्शन ऑफ द आरपीएम और स्पीड स्पीड लाइक फिफ्टी आरपीएम सिक्सटी सेवेंटी फाइव आरपीएम फॉर पैडल एपराटस एंड फिफ्टी सेवेंटी फाइव और हंड्रेड आरपीएम फॉर बास्केट एपराटस देन मीडिया एंड मीडिया वॉल्यूम इफ द सर्फेक्टेंट इज यूज देन विच टाइप ऑफ सर्फेक्टेंट इज यूज एंड हाउ मच परसेंटेज ऑफ द सर्फेक्टेंट इज यूज दैट इज टू बी जस्टिफाइड बेस्ड ऑन द डिजोल्यूशन एक्सपेरिमेंट then dissolution of the batches manufactured with meaningful changes so this point is very much important for the discriminatory ability or disproving the discriminating power of the dissolution method in this generally the critical bioavailability parameters are taken into consideration to prove the ability of the dissolution method to discriminate between the good batches and the bad batches so one complete video is also there only for discrimination discrimination uh, uh, related information so i request you to go to that video and watch that video to have understanding now coming to the critical bioavailability parameters these are nothing but the cmas or cpps or product characteristics which impact the dissolution and which in turn impact the bioavailability and bioequivalence so these are called as the critical bioavailability parameters then here example i have included the dissolution profile with product containing different percentage of crystalline api of the api that means the formulation contain the api in dissolved form or in amorphous form and crystalline api is not soluble so include the different percentage of crystalline api into the formulation and then perform the dissolution so that you can get the complete in understanding of the behavior of the dissolution based on this crystalline percentage so here from 0 to 15 0 to 20 percentage of the crystalline api is used and 0% is the ideal batch this dissolution is coming towards lower side based on the uh, presence of the crystalline percent api so this is the ability of the method to discriminate the batches then coming to the products with different particle size of api so 20 micron this is the ideal or bio batch uh, data and then 70 micron is taken and 100 micron is taken so this dissolution method is giving the discrimination between these particle size of the api so this slide is regarding the cmas of the api that is critical material attributes or these are also called as cbas critical bioavailability attributes then coming to the second example where tablet hardness is taken into consideration and here that granulation time is taken into consideration so from this slide you can understand that the optimum and high within range hardness gives the little difference in the dissolution while the high and out of range hardness is giving a slower type of dissolution so these these are the hypothetical examples made for easy understanding here also granulation time is a cpp of the process and if the granulation time varies between the optimum and high within range there is a very limited difference and if it goes out of the range then it will show the difference in the dissolution so if you consider 30% uh, 30 minutes Uh, as a q time point then here the difference is there also in this example we are able to see the difference within the different formulations with tablet hardness and here formulation with different granulation time so this type of information is required to be given then additionally for generic immediate release solid oral drug products containing highly soluble drug substances as per the bcs definition the dissolution is required to be given and dissolution qc testing to be conducted at as described in the fda's guidance for industry dissolution testing and acceptance criteria for immediate release solid oral doses form drug products containing high solubility drug substances and this guideline came in august 2018 so if your immediate release formulation contains bcs 1 or 3 API or drug substance, then design the dissolution based on this guideline. And this guideline is saying that 
what type of dissolution method is required and what is the generalized specification so for basket method stirring rate is 100 500 ml of 0.1 normal scl no surfactant and temperature is 37 degrees celsius similarly for paddle apparatus stirring rate is 50 rpm and volume is 500 ml for 0.1 normal scl in the aqueous medium here also surfactant is not required to be included so these are the standard conditions to be used for ir formulations containing bcs1 or 3 drug substances and for bcs2 and 4 the development is must and it is given into the report as we have seen in the discriminating ability then coming to the information data supporting the high solubility of the drug substances as described in the bcs guidance that is ICH guideline M9 for biopharmaceutics classification system based on biowaves. Then it should be included in the ANDA submission. If it is a US market product, it is generic. Then ANDA submission 32P5 or module 32S1.1.3. In addition to the proposed drug product dissolution data. So to support the dissolution, this solubility study is required and the solubility given in the ICHM9 guideline is that if the drug is soluble or highest therapeutic dose of the drug is soluble in 250 ml or less of the aqueous media over the pH range of 1.2 to 6.8 then this meets the criteria of BCS solubility and the drug substance may be called as highly soluble and ICHM9 guideline also gives the standard dissolution method or conditions standard dissolution conditions for testing the drug products containing bcs class 1 or 3 drug substances the volume is given is 900 ml or less in us it is given as 500 ml in ich it is given as 900 ml and the rest of the parameters are similar dissolution is required to be done on 12 units and three buffers are used to perform the dissolution testing that is pH 1.2, pH 4.5 and pH 6.8. Then the references for method development. Which references are there to develop a suitable dissolution method and to write a perfect dissolution method development report. So USP chapters are there 711, 724, 1092 and the ICH M9 guideline is there. Then Guidance for industry, NDA submission, content and format for abbreviated new drug applications is there. Then one guideline for dissolution testing is there for IR solid formulations came in August 1997. Then in August 2018 one guideline is there which is required to be referred and last it is M9 guideline. So, these are the main references for developing a suitable dissolution method and if the applicant follows all these guidelines and other guidelines if any then there are very very less chances for getting the query on the dissolution development and dissolution report. So this is regarding the information on dissolution method development and the contents of the dissolution development report. So dissolution is a very vast topic and it is a very very important topic for the examinations and interviews. So thanks for watching the videos. Keep watching the informative videos and to improve your knowledge. Please do like, share and subscribe to Pharma Learning in Dev. Thank you.